Good morning, friends. Welcome to the Faith Led Business Podcast. My name is Monica Perez Burnett. We are going to be talking about your business values and how if you don't know what they are yet, you need to go and figure that out. We're going to talk about how to do that because they are the foundation for everything you do in business. And the word gives us a clear example as to why we need to do this and how to do it. So let's jump in. Go ahead and invite your friends over. Say, let's figure this out because I know it's super important. And um, grab a cup of coffee, do whatever you need to do. I'm going to set things up for Instagram and I will see you back in a second. I'm thinking back on all those times When I feel close to from All that I could become Eager but too scared to climb Wanted to please my friends But it felt like the end of myself Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Faith Led Business Podcast. We are on day 309, moving right along. Today, we're going to be talking about the values in your business. I think this seems to be a topic that we tend to gloss over. We tend to jump over it really quickly. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll think about that later. I know that I have specific values for myself and that's all good and I'll just stand on those for a little bit even though I'm not completely sure what they are but I know I'm a good person. So that must mean that I have values, right? And then we go and launch these businesses and then we go and we try to create things on social media and then we go and we try to gain a following and then we go and we try to convince people to sell things to us And we are like, um, nothing's happening. What's going on? So today, God wants to bring us back to another foundational principle, which is centered leadership in our values. So I'm going to be reading from Proverbs 4, verses 20 to 27. Let this sink in. Um, Let this be who we are. Let this grow us uh, to a new place, to a new level. 
and here we go. So let me find it. I may need my glasses, my goodness. Ah, I'm 48, but Jared's already claiming that I'm pretty much 50 and it's just, it's a whole other way of being. Let me get my glasses on here. <laughs> it says here, oh, much better. My son, or you can say daughter, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Whoa, that is a packed, uh, a packed area here where he is telling us basically how we stay on track. How do we keep on track? And what is it? that is going to help us stay on track. Let me read you what it says here. Leaders who last do not merely react to their culture. They base their leadership on timeless and universal principles. Okay, so get this, while there are trends going on, on social media, in the business world, and many of those things, we look into it and we jump into it and we, we participate in them. Even so, it's super important not to stray from your main foundational principles, your values, because all of those things will come and go, yet those will remain steadfast. They remain relevant because they marry cultural context to timeless truth. Proverbs 4 encourages leaders to become principle-centered. There are crucial tools here. They are a guide. They help us stay on the right path. Your values are a guide. If in any moment, and I, I posted something on my stories a super early this morning <clears throat> saying, excuse me, stop trying to make everybody like you. You don't like everybody anyways, right? <laughs> Which is true. But this is the problem that many people who think they are for everybody or they need to be for everybody, they bend the rules. They go with whatever is trending in order to get a like. They, they do what they would normally not do just to persuade people to join them and to buy from them. Even though... Behind the scenes, they may be doing things differently or they are just not in integrity with the person that they are showing themselves to be online. And so these values that we have, we use them as a guide to stay on the right path. They are also a guard. They keep our hearts and our bodies protected. Why would, they, why would he say bodies? Of course, it keeps our heart protected because we know that when we stand up for our values, our, we will be heart-centered. We will always be serving a higher purpose other than ourselves, right? And our bodies are protected because do you know, do you know the stress that comes from wearing a mask so many years? from trying to be someone you're not in order to please other people. Do you know how weighing those lies are? Because you're not being yourself. The stress that comes from, it says here, free your mouth of, of perversity, of corrupt talk. Whatever you are saying that is not in alignment with him and the values that he has given you, 
guess what? They start weighing little by little. When we stray, as Trisha's saying, our bodies become sick. And who here has ever felt that before? I know 100% that that happened to me. 100%. Yes. So they are also a gauge. They enable us to evaluate where we are. We as entrepreneurs need to constantly be giving ourselves these checks. It's check-in time. In the next uh, offer that I'm providing, in the next post that I'm doing, in the next live that I'm doing, check-in time. Are these things that we're saying aligned with our values, aligned with who he has told us we are, and who we are supposed to be for others. I will use this as an example just because it's relevant. There are so many people right now that we know that have shown themselves to be uh, believers, have shown themselves to be people of integrity, people of heart. And then you see their timelines and you're like, uh, who is this? Do I even recognize this person? What happened? It's so obvious and so out of character for them that we are like kind of taken aback. And then what happens? Your trust in that person just went from 100 to 30 or 20 or less. Because the values that they stated they had in the way that they wanted to bring out their message was completely in disalignment with the way God tells us to react, to speak, and do all the things. Not that you can't be a person for justice, but there is a way to do things that are in alignment with the word. The word is our check. And when so this is this is why it's so important as a brand to be constantly checking yourself. Is what I just said is it is it lining up? Is it lining up? Take a chill pill, Monica, if you have something that has just infuriated you because of what you see before you go out and speak of it. Take a deep breath, go check the word and see how you need to address this. Are you operating out of flesh or are you operating with a powerful message that Holy, only Holy Spirit can give through you? Extremely important as a person, but even more so as a brand because your brand is the one that's making you money. Your brand is, is your business. It's the platform on which people are going to recognize you in a certain way and decide if they are going to align with your vision and jump on the bandwagon with you or not. And so we as entrepreneurs, as faith entrepreneurs, we need to be constantly in check, if that makes sense. Now, It says, these principles build our character, direct our decisions, and correct our lifestyle. Every leader ought to consume God's word, then put the truths he or she discovers in the form of principles that can guide, guard, and gauge your life. So as you consume the word, then you are given the values. Yes, these are the values that I'm going to adopt. These are the these other ones are the values I will not adopt. That will not be part of my brand. Someone else can take care of that. That is not something I feel pa- as passionately about. So I am going to just stick with the things I am passionate about because then it is my focus, my single focus as it says here, don't go to the right to the left, stay focused. And my single focus is going to be to bring this specific message to the world. 
And what does that look like? How do they see me? Do they see me as that message? What message are we giving out? What kind of values are we connecting to our message? Do you even have this clear yet in your mind? Have you ever written it down? Lately, integrity is a big is a big one for me because as I seek to share with people how empowered they can be by God's living word in their lives, I need to constantly be doing a self-check. Well, Monica, you're talking about it, but are you walking the walk? And so there's a constant going back and forth. Okay, you just said this. Are you following what you said? You are doing this. Is this in alignment with what the word says? Are you spending time with him so that he can mold this vision in your life of what you use as a barometer for what you do, what you don't do, for what you say and what you don't say? It's a very, very important part of business and branding. If you go to a professional branding coach, which can cost you about $30,000, if not more, they will go through all this process with you. What are your values? What are your adjectives? What is this and that? But they aren't running it through the filter of the word. And so the things that you thought maybe were your values are not your values because you're not walking it out. When there are things that are very dear to our hearts, we make sure that we show up for it. We are very in integrity with the things that we want to make a priority in our lives. I remember once um, when I was talking with uh, one of my former coaches and I would always say to him, you know, family. So it's God, then family, then work. Those are my values. And then we would go through what my work day looked like, what a a regular day would look like. It didn't line up. It didn't line up to what I was saying were my top values. I wasn't making decisions. I wasn't saying yes or no to specific things to make sure that those were a priority. It was literally like almost flipped. Work was at the top. Why? Why was work at the top for me at the time? Work was at the top because that is how I got liked. That was how people would uh, would see that I was able to accomplish something instead of fail. I had to strive really hard and work to make sure that I didn't fail. The perfectionist side of me kept me going and going and going. It didn't matter how many hours I was behind the computer. I needed to get this done and I needed it to look perfect and I needed it to be all of these things so that what people could see visually was then a reflection of me. And they would say, oh, that looks beautiful. That's amazing. Or thank you for saying that. And then I would say, Monica, you've done a good job. You've achieved your goal. Because on the Enneagram, I am a three. I am an achiever. And so then that was my pat on the back. And then I would just go on to the next thing to achieve. See, if I spend more time in the word, then I would know that, um, Monica, God says I don't need to strive. I don't need to strive in business. That... I can make a priority of my family because he says, uh, I've given you these kids, take care of them. I've given you this family. It's on your, it's on your time clock to make sure they are taken care of. And you know what I used as an excuse? I'm just going to kind of do my confessions here with you all. It may help you. But my excuse was, I'm going to work really hard to make sure that I have enough money so that then I can hire someone to do all the extra little things for home, like 
cleaning and cooking and doing all these extra things that are taking up time, which I didn't really do anyways, but in my mind, I was saying, which take up time and take me away from my family. So I'm going to spend all this time trying to make money. This was my thought process. I'm going to try to make money. I'm going to make money so that I can pay for someone to do these extra things so that I would then have time to spend with my kids. And the thing was, with that mentality, it's that have, be, do, right? It was like, if I have money, then I can do these things, then I will be an amazing mom. And that didn't work out for many years. And that, talking about your body, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body, that, when I got into that mode and my values weren't aligned with what I was saying was important to me, boom, that's when my health went down the toilet. Literally. I was for months bedridden. I couldn't do anything. I mean, it was bad. It was bad. And I'm still recovering from that because it's, it wasn't just like one year of being a workaholic. It was like a long time, a long time. And so isn't it interesting that if I had just taken the opposite direction, which was Monica, if I can put all my efforts into being in integrity with my word, which is saying my family is important to me, then I would first be a good mom and put them first so that then I could do the things. I would take on the posture of what does that look like? What does a good mom look like? What do they do? And then I would do those things so then I could have the fruit of being a good mom. Right. So super, super, super important to make sure we are doing we are checking ourselves. Check, 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 because we um, we claim we're serving our family when in reality we're serving ourselves. Because our actions aren't in alignment with what we are saying. It says the word. Are these yours? Yes, they are. You can use them. Yeah, weren't these the ones that you were talking about before we got those ones for me? Yes. Yeah, that's that Thank you. Um, so basically we use these things. We use these things that the word is telling us to then go ahead and just check, 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 check. I'm telling you habits, habits can last a very long time. Habits can hurt you. Bad habits can hurt you. Good habits are amazing. But I know from my personal experience that I have a tendency, because I am an achiever, I have a tendency to go overboard on what's needed. To go overboard on what's needed. Right now, are you going overboard on what's needed? Are you going past the limit of your values? And not having boundaries where those values stop, where you're saying family is important, where you're saying personal care is important, where you're saying God is important. How much time in comparison are you spending with God versus in your business? That is very telling, my friends. Very telling. Um, this week that I've been doing that corporate fast, with Tiffany Montgomery, I remember on day one, I was like, wow, we're going to do a whole hour of prayer at four in the morning from four to five every morning since uh, since Saturday. We've been doing corporate prayer and then fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. There's still a few days left. We go until Saturday. If you are interested in participating in that, let me know and I will send you the link. That's the only reason why I'm sharing it with you in case you want to do it as well. But one of the things is that people will think, oh my gosh, spending a whole hour in prayer? Who has time for that or what does that even look like? 
And as the days went on and we would finish that hour, I realized that the time went by like if it was one minute. It went by so quickly. And I was like, oh my gosh, I feel like I want to be here longer. It's a nice place to be. It feels so good. It feels so comfortable. It feels so um, like a, a weight is lifted off. Like you're not alone doing these things. And so when we say that our values are to be a faith-led entrepreneur, that God is first, where are we in disalignment? Check, 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 check. And so I'm just sharing my personal experience because this, I know what this is like and you may be feeling this as well. This may be your life as well and I don't want you to be where I was to the point where it gets to your body and it starts to corrupt your body. And then when your body isn't feeling well, guess what? Your mood and your mindset It's really hard to get out and be a happy camper when you're in pain, like physical pain. And so we want to guard ourselves from this. We want to gauge where we are continuously every day as we are posting, as we are speaking, and as we are conducting ourselves as faith-led entrepreneurs. Are we doing what we say? are our values. Are we showing that in our marketing? Are we showing that as we speak to people? Are we showing that in our family? And are we showing that to ourselves? And most importantly, are we showing that to God? Because we're saying, yes, you are number one. And he's like, oh, really? Prove it. Prove it. You want me to bless your business and you're saying I'm number one, yet you're spending 50 hours on your next whatever you're putting out and you don't even have time to talk to me about it. That's a hard pill to swallow, but it's the truth. It's the truth. And so in these um, podcast episodes, he's just telling us, look, I want you to walk the talk. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Turn your ears to my words. Don't let them out of your sight. Literally plaster it wherever you need. Make it your screensaver. Put it on your walls. Put it in front of the refrigerator, wherever it needs to be. Because you want to gauge yourself. He is good. He is good. He will, if you ask him, he will bring you back to center. He's saying, don't go right or left. The only thing left is center. So we need to be willing to be once again centered in him and especially as a brand. Is this brand a place where my customers can fall and feel safe? Is this a place where my customers can fall and see the vision of what I'm trying to put out? and adopt that vision? Is this a place where my potential customers would like to adopt the same values that I have? Is this a place of safety for them? Is this a place where they feel that they can communicate effectively or freely with what they're experiencing because it's similar? It has a similar vibe, a similar feel. And so it begins to feel like a family. It begins to feel like a movement. It's not just this buying and selling. It is truly this sowing and reaping where my brand is sowing into that soil where we want something to grow. Do my people feel that? That is the question you need to ask yourself. And while we're at it, let me ask you, do you feel that here with the Faith-Led Business brand? All of those questions I just asked, do you feel that here? 
If not, tell me where I can do better. Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Or if you have any suggestions. This company that I have is not about me. It's completely about you. And so if I'm not serving you in the way that you need to be addressed and served, then I need to realign. Because my commitment is to do the assignment that God gave me. And my assignment is you. Do you see how it all connects? And so if I'm not willing to to serve you, my assignment, then I'm off with him. And if there's anything I do not want to be is off with him. I want to be front and center. And I believe all of you can do the same. And we will be exploring this deeper because God has been depositing in me um, something very revolutionary for the business world when it comes to branding and when it comes to faith. And it's coming, it's coming, it's taking its time. Um, but he, like every day, he gives me a few little ideas and I jot it down and it's gonna come, it's gonna turn into something very powerful, a tool that you can use to keep your gauge, a tool that you can use to stay front and center, a tool that you can use to not have to turn right or left or even spend time there or waste time there, but come back and realign to who you truly are. That that song that I play at the beginning of this podcast um, on the live version, it's not on the podcast version, but on the live version, if you go and watch it, it says, this is who I am. This is who I am. This is who my brand is. Do you know who your brand is? If you don't have the brand values, you don't have a brand. Because people will go for your values more than what you're selling. That's why they say people buy you, not your product. So this is, this is an extremely important part Um, and piece of the puzzle. So I'm excited that he decided to share that with us today. Um, For some reason, he didn't want me to read the the devotional we've been using, and he just had me open up the Bible. So, um, So that's, I guess, something that we need to take note of. And, um, and like I said, we're going to be diving deeper into this idea. So let's go ahead. Let's pray this day in. We are expecting amazing things uh, in our business and in our lives. And let's take some time. I'll challenge you to take some time to ask God, uh, what are my values here? Who am I? What do I represent for people? What is that feeling? What is that stance? What what are the things that I won't bend on? What are the things that I will not allow? Um, I'll give you a a specific example that just happened to me yesterday. I had one of my friends online talking about how, um, how, you know, why does does depression come every, every time this year? And, um, and she was saying how depression sucked. And I get it. Lots of people will talk about that. They'll, they'll vent about that. But it was very interesting to me because I was such a yes person. I would have just come as, oh, I'm, I'm praying for you. I feel, um, you know, I'm so sorry this is happening. And I would have left it at that. But now my values tell me that I can't stay quiet knowing that's, that that's not who she is. That's not who she is. And if I stay quiet, I am contributing and feeding that lie. So I had to jump in the comments and say, I'm sorry, I disagree with you. The reason why you, this depression is coming every year around this time is because you just said it comes every year around this time. And that's why it's happening. You just open the door for it. It says, oops, it says here in the word that your words have power. And so I said, no, it stops here. It stops here. This is not who you are. And you are with your voice going to claim that this year will be different. 
He can change a person from one second to another, one who is willing to bow down, to be obedient to the word. And so one of my new values, because this was not Monica of even a year ago, I would have just said, oh, I'm so sorry. One of my new values is to make sure that truth is the most important thing when interacting with people. I am not no longer willing to buy people's stories that are riddled with lies. And so my job is to call out the enemy there, to expose him and make him visible to people so they can see where, where things don't line up here. So I'm just giving you a heads up right now. If I see any of you, <laughs> if I see any of you in a place like that, I'm not saying you're bad luck. I, I think I said things yesterday that were completely out of alignment. I'm not talking about perfection, my friends. I am far from perfect and I know you are too. It happens. But we need to be astute and we need to be like those eagles looking around. We need to have keen vision to be able to see things for what they are. And so one of my values now is truth. If I see things that are not true, then my value is telling me I need to call it out and I need to bring light to that dark situation. I need to motivate that person to see who they are, not point the finger at them like, you're so dumb, don't you know that you're loved by God? That makes no sense. But to claim the power of God and his authority over someone, to cover someone, to remove the veil in front of their eyes so that they can truly see who they are, I'm all for that. And to leave them excited and happy about who they are, you better sign me up for that. I am all over that. Do you see how different you can act and you can be when you decide to hold steadfast to a specific value that God has given you. Like I said, there is, there is no way a year ago I would have responded that way. Zero chance. Zero chance. But now, because I'm spending more time with him, he's like, Monica, I need you to step in here. I need you to show the enemy who he is. And I need you to expose him so that, boom, this person can feel free again. Right? I am the exposer of lies. I'm going to put that on my job description. <laughs> it has to be that way. So that's just a, a quick example, or maybe a long one. I don't know how long we've been here. But that's just an example of what standing in your values will make you do. It's walking that out and it makes it so it makes you feel so good and so empowered that you're doing something that he told you to do. And you're bringing that into your business and it's like, whoa, whoa, look at you go, God. And then people, you start seeing the fruit of that, the fruit of the values that you stand in when other people don't have any you give them the opportunity to stand in yours. And that is a brand. That is a movement. You're giving them the opportunity to stand in your values. That's why you need to go and figure them out. Okay? That is your homework. To go and figure out, ask God, give me a list of specific values that I need to adopt and put into my brand and live out so that other people who aren't quite there yet, and that's okay, like I said, we're not perfect, can go ahead and adopt those. It's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. So let's go ahead and let's pray this day in. And let's, um, let's keep moving. Go make that list. If you want to share it with me, I would love, love, love to see your list of values. I truly would. That would make me very happy and excited. So, Father God, we are just so thankful that you have told us how important your word is. You've been telling us that all year. But now, when it comes to our brand, 
how truly important it is in the way that we are to then show up for our audiences, for our new friends, for the people you've called us to serve. It is truly uh, enlightening, revealing, like my mouth is just, my jaws dropped open. Just thinking about how knowing this and holding tightly to these specific values that you have given us, how that will show our audience the authority that we do have in you. And therefore, they will feel safe with us because they know that we are not going to, just because other people turn right or left, we will do the same. We will run our race. We will run it well. We will stay focused on the course that you have laid out for us. And because we are so committed to that, guess what? I know that there will be fruit from that because you have promised so and that other people will be able to see you in our unbending of the rules and you will be able to give them an opportunity for freedom in their lives for joy in their lives, for release of the strongholds in their lives. And it's such a beautiful thing to expect and to behold once you walk in it. So we thank you for this blessing, Lord. We ask for commitment to get this very important foundational work done. And we are just ready for what you are to bring to our day today. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you, thank you for hanging out with us. Um, what is the, oh, okay, in the group, I have, I made a unit in the uh, Faith Led Business Builders group. If you are looking for um, the verses of every week, it's, um, I think it's unit one. Um, you can go in there and I've been posting each and every verse. So you can go check out all the verses there. All right, guys, well, have a fabulous day. I will be talking to you uh, tomorrow morning. Thank you for being here. If you know anybody in business who doesn't have this foundational step, would you please um, feel willing to share this out with them? They need to know this. This is super, super important. Have a fabulous day. If you're not yet part of my text squad where I send out notifications when I go live or little tidbits throughout the day, Go ahead and text me at 408-539-9611. Just say hi and um, add me to your contacts and I will be giving you, sending you little messages. Um, it'll be really fun and it will just be between me and you and you won't have to worry about having a group chat. You get to chat with me. So thanks again. Have a fabulous day. Love you all. Bye.